Okay, for this graph we're going to look at x minus y squared plus z squared equals zero in three dimensions. And before we get started on this one, I want you to make sure that you are ready for a challenge. Uh, this is a little bit more difficult surface than some of the other ones we've looked at, so if you haven't um, kind of mastered some of the easier ones yet, you might wait on this one until you feel a little bit more confident. So if you're ready for the challenge, uh, let's go ahead and jump in and kind of look at what we've got here. Um, often I start by doing the trace in the YZ plane um, where I would plug in X equals zero. I'm actually not going to start with that trace for this one. I'm going to do a little bit of rearranging of the original equation to start with. Uh, and I'm going to do this so that we can sort of recognize a couple of features uh, that we're going to have for this surface. Um, so if I move the two squared terms to one side of the equation and leave the non-squared term on the other side of the equation, I'll get x equals y squared minus z squared. And um, we'll notice maybe early that um, we're going to have a couple of different parabolas here. Uh, the x equals y squared portion will be a parabola. And then when I have x equals negative z squared, I'll have another parabola. And um, those are both going to open on the x-axis. But one important thing is that one of them will open in the positive x direction and one of them will open in the negative x direction. So I'm actually going to start with those two parabolas first. Um, Let's start with when y equals zero, um, we get x equals negative z squared. So that's going to open in the xz plane, vertex at the origin, and it's going to open in the negative x direction. Um, so I'm just going to kind of roughly sketch that parabola in. Uh, it's important to remember that that parabola is going into the surface of the paper. And I'm going to do a little bit of labeling here that I don't always do. Uh, this back part of the blue parabola is going up and back, up and back. And the bottom part of the parabola here is going down and back into the paper. Okay, um, when I plug in z equals zero, I will get x equals y squared, which is also a parabola. That one, however, is in the xy plane and will open in the positive x direction. Okay, so I have this right-hand side, which is coming towards us, and to the right. And then the other part over here that's going to the left and forward. Okay, so when I have these two parabolas um, that are both intersecting at the same vertex, um, they're rotated 90 degrees from each other. The blue one is in the xz plane and the green one is in the xy plane. So they're rotated 90 degrees from each other and they're opening in opposite directions. This is kind of the classic sign of this particular kind of shape, uh, which is called a hyperbolic paraboloid. Uh, we're not going to talk about the hyperbolic part quite yet. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but you can certainly see the part of it that would give its name paraboloid. Um, the two parabolas here. Uh, this shape is also sometimes called a saddle. You can have other kinds of saddles, but this is one example of a saddle type graph. Um, or another way to think about it, and I'll often bring to class, uh, Pringles. So if you think about a Pringles chip, where when you look at a Pringles chip from one side, you see this sort of shape. And then when you look at it kind of from the other side, you see that you've got another cross section. 
opening in an opposite direction. So I tried to sketch over here in red a little example of a Pringles chip. Um, that's essentially the same kind of graph that we have here, but uh, the graph that we have here is rotated uh, from what I drew on the left side over here. Uh, the graph that we have over here opens uh, in the positive x direction uh, toward us and then backward to the negative x direction. All right. To graph these, I tend to do these a little bit differently than you might see in your textbook. Um, what I tend to do is pick a point on one end of one of the parabolas, so it doesn't really matter where, and I'm basically going to draw something that looks a lot like a Pringles chip here. And so I'm going to pick that point, I'm going to draw an arc that would connect that point to one of the parabolas, that one of the ends of the blue parabolas I drew, and I'll actually end up doing this for both ends of the blue parabola, so it doesn't matter which one I do first. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to here, to that point there where I stopped drawing the blue parabola, and then come back to the other end of the green parabola. So I just drew this arc from one end of the green parabola to one of the blue parabolas and back. And then I'm going to do the same thing from the other, uh, connecting to the other part of the blue parabola. I'm going to kind of just dash this in here. Some of this will be behind. Okay, that part there I did not dash will be in front. All right, so what we have at this point is basically uh, the saddle or Pringles chip sort of rotated on its side so that the part that is my green parabola on my 3D graph would correspond to this part on my drawing of the Pringles chip. So kind of opening toward us there. And then the red arcs would correspond to the two red pieces here. And let me draw in the blue part on my Pringles chip. So the sketch I have on my axes is rotated from what I have sketched over here that looks like a Pringles chip, but it's basically the same surface just rotated. Uh, I'm going to from there draw in some arcs parallel to that blue um, parabola that's kind of going up and back into the paper and then some other pieces here that would be going behind and back into the paper. And I might go ahead and take my red pen and kind of fill in those parts we would be able to see. This dashed part behind we would not be able to see and then as it comes out from behind the other little flap of the um, of the Pringle chip we'd be able to see it. I'm going to go ahead and shade this other surface in yellow here so that we can distinguish that from the gray surface that would be on top. Okay so the yellow surface would be there on the underside and the gray surface would be there on top. Um, the pictures that you tend to see in the textbooks will often look a little bit different. I'm going to kind of just go over here on my Pringles chip. Um, they will tend to often have uh, pieces of hyperbolas sketched kind of at the edges here and then back into the paper here. And then maybe some opening in an opposite direction perhaps up here in that way. And then some connecting curves maybe connecting those. Um, and that's the same surface. Uh, it's really just a matter of kind of where you choose to stop drawing. Um, we've looked at that with planes. We've looked at that with lots of other surfaces where uh, you know you can't draw forever as you don't really have enough paper for that. But uh, you have to make some choice about kind of where to stop drawing. And um, if you want to go ahead and draw a little bit more and draw those hyperbolas, you can do that as well. But it's really the same surface. It's just kind of where I choose to stop drawing it. So you can see that little Pringle saddle graph kind of overlaying. It's really the same surface. It's just a little bit different edge on it from the graph that you would see here. Um, the hyperbola is where it gets the name hyperbolic paraboloid would come from, if I look at the equation that I have in black up here, x equals y squared minus z squared, if I plug in some different values for x, and instead of just x equals zero, uh, which would give me a degenerate hyperbola, I'm going to plug in a positive or negative value for x. So for example, when I plug in x equals positive one, 
Um, let me put that out here, x equals positive 1. I'll get 1 equals y squared minus z squared. Where that hyperbola would be here on my surface would be out at a unit of 1 in the x direction. I would have a hyperbola that would open in the y direction that would be on my surface. So I could draw that over here. It would be on my little Pringle surface. But I don't usually find it helpful to draw those hyperbolas in to actually sketch the surface. This is the one case um, where I don't usually draw in all three traces. Also, if I plug in x equals negative 1, I get negative 1 equals y squared minus c squared. And then I would divide through by the negative 1 to get that in standard form. So I would have 1 equals z squared minus y squared. It would change the signs on my terms on the right side. Um, so back there at x equals negative 1, on the x-axis at negative 1, I would have some parabolas that open, I'm sorry, hyperbolas that open in the z direction uh, with z-intercepts at plus and minus 1. So those would be kind of on the back flap of my little Pringle chip there. Those hyperbolas are a little bit difficult to see. Uh, if you're in class, the day when I bring Pringles to class, we're actually going to draw on some Pringles in class. And then hopefully you can see those hyperbolas a little bit better. Um, but I usually don't find them helpful to sketch in uh, when I'm actually making my surface. So I'll usually just draw the two parabolas and then grab a point at one end of one of the parabolas, swoop around, connect that to the other parabola, and then back to the other side of the first parabola you started with, and then doing the same thing with the other side. OK, and these require uh, a little bit more practice. You'll get better at them as you practice more. So um, be sure to make sure you practice a few of them.